This is EOV Nigeria on radio. Hello and welcome to POV Nigeria on radio. This is Nigeria's only developmental and solution journalism online radio podcast where we have a sit down to discuss, understand and make sense of our many challenges as a country while finding possible solutions to the problem. My name is Henry Igwebike and I am your host on the show. We'll go for a quick commercial break and when we come back, POV Nigeria continues. Please don't go anywhere. One of Africa's biggest cancers is that Africans, for whatever reason, seem insistent on electing leaders who've built nothing and then wonder why they build nothing. You've built nothing. You've created nothing. But for your words and political oratory, your ability to hold a tune and sing a verse, your ability to fill a stadium with poor people on the promise of a food hamper and a t-shirt, and then we vote for you. And we wonder why you don't know how to build roads or houses or balance a budget or just make sure that crime and law and order is in place. <laughs> we elect clowns and then give them the seat of the headmaster's office. Okay, if you just joined us, this is POV Nigeria on radio. And on this episode, we'll be taking a look at the Central Bank of Nigeria, Naira redesign policies and its short and long-term consequences to Nigeria and to Nigerians. There is an adage that says, only but a very foolish and stupid man would want to kill mosquitoes in his living room with an AK-47 instead of an insecticide. Unfortunately, what Nigerians have experienced in the last couple of months is a situation where the Central Bank of Nigeria and those running it have metaphorically used an AK-47 instead of an insecticide to kill mosquitoes in our collective living room called Nigeria. I say it once and I say it over and over again. This is the worst time to be a Nigerian. In fact, this is the only time every Nigerian wish never to be called or mentioned as a Nigerian. Not only are Nigerians suffering from a backlog of decay in the country such as lack of electricity, insecurity, multidimensional poverty, fuel scarcity, etc. All of this, unfortunately, have been worsened by Mr. Godwin Amirfile's draconian financial policies in the country. In the quest for the Central Bank of Nigeria and those in authority to heed back on politicians whom they think might use money as a tool to dictate the electioneering process, what they have unfortunately done is kill and suffocate average Nigerians and today many Nigerians hardly can breathe. Ladies and gentlemen, would we ever have imagined that a democratic and an independent state like Nigeria will see itself practice a financial policy synonymous to what we only read and see in North Korea, Afghanistan or Venezuela. Why is it very difficult for Mr. Godwin Amirfile to understand that the same politicians whose financial actions he targets are the same people with the highest shares in billions of Naira and millions of dollars deposited in some of these banks and also they do occupy positions such as chairman of these banks and directors and therefore could have that way no matter the restriction by the CB under the new Naira notes. Why is it difficult for Mr. Godwin Amirfili to understand that the collateral damage of his actions of checkmating financial actions to some of these very comfortable but very greedy and corrupt politicians has also made him an accomplice and guilty for the debt of a child, father, mother, brother or sister today who prior needed medical emergency which wasn't given because families couldn't make withdrawals from bank as soon as they wanted for hospital payments due to his heavy-handed Naira redesign policies. Why is it difficult for Mr. Godwin Amirfili to understand that this is 2023 and you cannot dictate or police the lives of people with an all-size fix-all brutal policy that his fellow billionaire friends would quickly evade 
but will rather hit back on poor Nigerians instead. Mr. Godwin Emefile, you were once a former insurance and finance university lecturer at both University of Nigeria at Lusaka and University of Port Harcourt. My question to you is, would you have okayed Naira redesign as a project topic for a final year student of insurance and finance who believes the only solution to recover stashed currency from corrupt politicians is to create currency scarcity? Knowing too well that over 34.1 million Nigerians are unbanked and financially excluded. Knowing too well that Nigeria's telecommunication infrastructure as a conduit for financial institutions to boost product and service transactions is still epileptic and non available in rural communities in Nigeria amidst other challenges. It's very unfortunate, Mr. Godwin Emefili, that neither you or any of your family members is currently feeling the pains Nigerians are going through, paying 6,000 naira to collect. 5,000 Naira of red, green, and blue monochrome so-called redesigned Naira notes or queuing for hours at the ATM to collect their own money. Basic secondary school economics states that to attract foreign direct investment FDI, such countries must have a good investment climate. And I honestly think, in my humble opinion, Mr. Godwin Emefile, that your policies is making it difficult, I mean very difficult, for genuine foreign investors to look towards Nigeria. I rest my case. This is Nigeria on radio.